spent the last moments of her life in this room. Miss Monroe did not commit suicide. Outside in the darkness, four men were waiting to kill Marilyn Monroe. If the Mafia wanted to get dirt on the Kennedy brothers and Marilyn Monroe, she was a sitting target. Marilyn, the Kennedys, and the mob. Marilyn cast her spell over some of the most powerful men in America. The President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, and America's most dangerous mobster, Chicago area crime boss Sam Giancana. Everyone from moguls and mega stars to the man on the street desired her. In her final year, she was courting the Kennedys, courting the mob, and courting disaster. It is Marilyn Monroe's last week. She is abusing alcohol and pills. She spends her last weekend with the mob boss, Sam Giancana, and his cronies at the Cal Neva Lodge in Lake Tahoe. It is a drug-induced debacle of sex. She seems to sprint towards self-destruction. Her affair with JFK is long over, and her affair with Bobby, the man she feels she loves, is ending. There was controversy between Marilyn and Bobby, a small red diary that Marilyn used. One day when he was there, what is this? he found her diary on the table. Marilyn's diary. And then all of a sudden, I see him getting livid. Hi, Bobby. Uh, well, about that time, he, uh, Marilyn came in and he said, Marilyn, what, what is this? And she said, oh, it's my diary. I want to remember, you know, things so that I can talk to you about it later. Get he said, well, I, I, I don't, I mean, get rid of it. Get rid of it now. Get rid of it now. At the time of great government crisis, the CIA mob plot to assassinate Castro, the Bay of Pigs fiasco, and unprecedented nuclear tension, Marilyn was recording the intimate thoughts of the Attorney General and perhaps the President before him. These things uh, in 1962 uh, were red hot and involved the whole complete Kennedy administration and it could have been a great embarrassment to him at all. Robert Slatzer was Marilyn's longtime friend. They spoke on the Friday before she died and she delivered a no-nonsense message. She said, I'm going to hold a press conference and I'm going to blow the lid off of this whole damn thing. A serious threat from a seriously unstable woman and not only threatening to the Kennedys, but by Sunday, Marilyn was found dead in her bed at home. We heard Eunice Murray, Marilyn's housekeeper, a woman who spent a lot of time right here in Marilyn's kitchen, tell the official version of what happened. And as we will see, it is loaded with contradictions. Contradictions which, when sorted out, make for a very sinister tale. Hmm. Mrs. Mama, Murray told heart. investigators you know that she had spent the day at the house. Mm -hmm. Marilyn's press agent, Pat Newcomb, the spent the day there as well. Day. How soon can you be here? Dr. Ralph Greenson, Marilyn's psychiatrist, spoke to Marilyn in the afternoon and later wrote, she seemed somewhat depressed and somewhat drugged. He had come to see his patient after Marilyn had called him around 4.30. Dr. Greenson asked the press agent, Pat Newcomb, to leave, and the doctor stayed with Marilyn until 7.15. Greenson also asked Mrs. Murray to stay overnight. There were phone calls, and Marilyn retired to her room around 8 o'clock. According to Mrs. Murray, that was the last time she would see Marilyn alive. Mrs. Murray, in her adjacent room, awoke in the night and noticed the phone cord under the door. Mrs. Murray claimed this was unusual, so she called Greenson. He rushed over, and they found Marilyn dead on the bed, with the phone clutched in her hand. The police were called at 4.25 a.m. Sunday. Jack Clemens was the first police officer on the scene. What happened? And he says Mrs. Murray told him she called Greenson about midnight. I said, why did it take so long to notify us? Well, um, and Dr. Greenson spoke up, and he said, we had to get permission from the publicity department of the studio before we could notify anybody. Now, that's not an answer. It's certainly not true. But when the police report was written, Mrs. Murray said she noticed the light on much later, after 3 a.m., and called Dr. Greenson at 3.30. This became the time accepted in the official story. There was something else that bothered Clemens. Well, it, it, was all, it was all cleaned up. There was nothing out of place anywhere. Other witnesses have come forward to question the time frame. Natalie Jacobs was the wife of Arthur Jacobs, who handled Marilyn's press relations. They were at the Hollywood Bowl that evening for a concert. I would say it was midway, approximately 10 
to 1030. I, I cannot say. I don't remember, of course, exactly. But during the performance, he received the news that she had, in fact, died. And we didn't, I didn't see him for three days. Abe Landau was Marilyn Monroe's next-door neighbor. We were out to a dinner party, and we arrived home. It must have been close to 1 o'clock. And there were a lot of cars. We were trying to find out what happened. And we spoke to someone who said that Mary Monroe had died. Remember that Mrs. Murray told the police she got concerned after 3 a.m. and called Dr. Greenson at 3.30. It really fell apart um, a few years ago when, for the first time, Dr. Engelberg, uh, Marilyn's medical doctor, said that, as he understood it, the alarm had first been raised between 11 p.m. and 12 o'clock. That's a remarkable statement from one of the key witnesses in the story.